played as a popular financial services API. While it doesn't process payments directly, it, uh, it is useful for allowing your users to securely share their financial data with your app. If we look at the, the list of uh, products, we, we see authentication. Uh, it allows your users to share their account and routing numbers, balance, they can share their um, balance in their bank account, identity for verifying identity, then their list of transactions, and so on. In this video, we are going to write a small project that uses this uh, auth product, and we can see it right here. So there will be a button for uh, connecting their bank account. This app is in a sandbox mode. So here we select the bank that we are trying to sign in with. Let's say Bank of America. So in Sandbox, we get this fake authentication flow, but if we switch to the keys to production, then this will actually be the Bank of America sign-in uh, window. So we go through this entire flow. We select an account that um, we want to share with the app. And uh, when everything is done, It will show the uh, account number and uh, the routing number. So our app will have two components. There will be a server written in uh, Node.js with Express and uh, a front end written in uh, React with uh, J JavaScript. We will write everything from scratch. The final source code and the URLs uh, that are relevant will be shared in the video description below. And if you want to support the channel, please like the video or uh, consider subscribing. Thank you. We will start by initializing both the back end and the front end. So we're going to start with the back end. We are in an empty directory in, uh, in the console. So we are going to create a new um, directory called server. And inside server, we will do npm init. The package name is good. All the defaults are fine. The entry point will be index.js that we are going to add later. Yeah, everything looks good. And um, now we go back higher one level and uh, we are going to uh, create a new React app using Vite. So create npm create Vite at latest. And in here, the project name we will um, call it uh, client and in here we will do react just normal javascript and uh, we need to go to client and then run uh, npm install so go to client npm install next i'm going to open a project in an ide I'm using uh, IntelliJ IDEA, but you can use uh, other IDE that you prefer. So in here we can see we have uh, the client and the server. So we're, go we're going to try to run the client right now. If we look in package.json, in inside the script section, we can start the server using this target dev. So in, uh, in the terminal, if we are in the client, we just uh, do npn npm run dev and um, if we open this uh, url localhost 5173 in the browser we will see our app right here and uh, we're, we're going to clean uh, clean up this uh, remove um, all this uh, pre-configured uh, vite ui so inside Let's see, in uh, app.jsx, we comment out the import app CSS. So this um, removed the ho horizontal centering. And in main.jsx, uh, we also removed the import index.css. So this removed also the vert vertical centering. So now inside app.jsx, we will um, remove all, all of these things and just uh, just return a simple span, let's say hello world. Make sure it works. 
and uh, yeah we see that it's good we we don't need this use state either so we can um, delete it just save the file and it should be uh, refreshed now we will start the server and uh, also create our uh, first endpoint on the server so in uh, in the server directory we need to create the index.js uh, file and uh, also in the terminal we need to install some uh, packages in the server so inside server we we need to install express like that and also uh, I'm going to use um, the node mon um, utility for uh, for auto re reloading the server file whenever we make changes to it so make sure you have it installed the, um, with the globally with the dash g so npm install globally node monitor like that and uh, now in in the server we can just uh, create a normal express app so we will do express require express app equals express and um, we're going to start it on um, port 8000 and just uh, print that uh, server has started like that and inside package.json we will make um, a script in here let's just call this one server and we will use the node mon which we just installed and index.js so what node mon does whenever we make a change to index.js it restarts the server and um, so in here if you're in in, in IntelliJ you can just uh, click this triangle for server or if you're in a terminal you can just do npm run server and uh, but yeah for for me I'll, I'll just run uh, with that with the triangle and uh, now uh, we are going to add our first uh, endpoint in here let's just call it um, hello and then request to response and we are going to write re re response.json let's do message hello world and you can see after we saved our file um, the server has started again that's uh, that was performed by node mod so in, in here uh, if we open a new tab on port 8000 so under hello we see that we get the, the response from the endpoint we just created now we will connect the front end to the back end by making a post request from the react app to the server so first we need to make a few changes to the server for allowing this so if we go back to the terminal inside the server we need to install uh, cores because we will make a cross origin request an ajax request and uh, also we need to install a body dash parser because uh, the request will have a json body that needs to be parsed so also in here we will do app.use cores oh we need we need to require it first so cores equals require cores and body parser body dash parser so in here we will do app.use uh, cores and also app that use body parser that json and uh, function call and uh, we see the server was restarted so now uh, we will also change this uh, endpoint we already have we will make it a post endpoint so app that post and also parse the um, let the name from the body so we will do response body name we will use this uh, parameter in the response 
So in here we will do response JSON and the message will be hello and then uh, the name that was uh, provided. Something like that. So now we can uh, work inside the client. So if we go to source in here in app.jsx, we can make uh, an Ajax request using a use effect. So it will be something like this and uh, dependency will be empty. So it will only uh, it, it will only execute it once after the rendering. And here we will make an async function fetch and also call uh, this function fetch. So in here it will be actually we need to add a dependency to the client uh, to Axios. So if we go if we go to client we will do npm install uh, Axios. My bad. Like that we can check that it was added. Okay, very good. So if we go in here we will be we will do const response axios dot post and uh, the endpoint will be dash hello and also we need to provide the uh, the base path for axios axios dot uh, defaults base URL it will be HTTP localhost 8000. We also need to import Axios in, um, in our file. And uh, yeah, we need to provide um, our, our name to the post request. So it will be name Vlad, let's say. And um, this one returns a future, so we can we need to await on it. And for now, let's just print the data that we received. Let's see a response, and we need to print uh, response that response that data. So in here, if we go to our um, UI, in here, if if we open uh, Developer Tools to console, and if we reload. It looks like our uh, request failed with H with an internal server error. So if we look uh, inside the, um, the server logs, it will say cannot read properties of undefined name. E yeah, actually this one should be request that body, not response that body. So now if we try this one again, yeah, we will see that we got the correct response hello vlad okay with all this uh, scaffolding out of the way we can now uh, start discussing the played api so if we search for uh, played quick start i will link this uh, page in the video description together with everything else so uh the concept that is uh, the most important uh, in played is um is this flow over here so there there are three types of tokens that we need to um, that we need to understand for processing the the entire flow so first uh, there is a link token that the server will will uh, obtain from the played api once we have a link token we provide this link token to the UI library. In our case, it will be a, a React library that we use in our uh, React app. So we provide this link token to the um, to the library. Then once the user performs the authentication, the UI component library will give us back a public token. And then with this public token, we call uh, the played API again from the server and we receive back an access token and with this access token then we can call the authentication api and uh, it will give us the um, it will give us the account and routing numbers of the users 
So, and then also this access token, we can store it in, uh, in our database. We don't have a database in our simple application, but, uh, and we can, we can reuse the access token for uh, different products depending on how we configured, uh, how we created the initial token, the initial link token. So we'll start by uh, connecting our server to the Plate API. So in here, in um, inside the server, so we go to the terminal and um, we will navigate to server. We need to install the Plate dependency, so N npm i for install and then Plate and uh, so if we search for npm uh, plate, it will be, there should be an example here. Let's see. Yeah, this one, how to, um, how to configure the, the plate API. So it will be this, we, we can just copy it and uh, fill it later. The problem is uh, we, we don't have import in here, so we'll do const equals require played. And uh, yeah, we will use sandbox. We need to get these two credentials from, um, from the played uh, login. So let's say played login. So in here, inside team settings, keys, we need to transfer the client ID and uh, the secret for a sandbox. So after I finish this video, I will refresh the sandbox key. So if you use, uh, if you use the source code that I'm sharing, please uh, use your own sandbox key and client ID. Otherwise, it won't work. Copy this one. And uh, yeah, normally, normally these two fields should be in a .env file, but in order to keep this video short, we will uh, skip that step. And uh, yeah, this is looking good. Also, one more thing in here, uh, uh, you need to whitelist the um, redirect URI. So you go to API in here. And uh, inside the allow the uh, redirect URIs, you go to configure and you have to make sure that you have this uh, HTTP localhost uh, 5173, which is the URL of our app in here. And also the URL you have, in, uh, it's important if it ends with um, forward slash or not, you need, we need to specify this one exactly in the, when uh, we create the link, we'll, we'll see it later. So this all looks good. And in here we will call this one, uh, let's say played client. So now in a uh, quick start, we will uh, move ahead and um, use um, and write this function for uh, creating the um, link token, which is the, the first type of token that we create. So in here, um, yeah, we can just use this one and we will adapt it like this. Let's just uh, leave it as create link token in here. The function needs to be asynchronous. Let's see what the problem is here with request. Yeah, it's overriding the, this object, which is uh, strange. Let's uh, call this one played request. Played request. We don't need a webhook in here. And also, so we need to have uh, unique uh, user IDs for our users. In our case, we're just going to call it user. We only have one user. So we deleted the webhook and the re redirect URI. We have uh, HTTP localhost. Uh, it, it's that one from here. So 
we can just copy this one and we fill it right here like this and here we need to fill in the plate request and uh, yeah this is good so in here we can just um, we can just return uh, status 500 send uh, something like failure so now um, yeah we don't need this one we don't need the user that find so we just have the played request and we send and this one will be played client because we renamed the client in here to played client so this one should be good let's see if the server is uh, running well yeah it is good so now uh, inside the um, inside our react app we will just call this uh, create link token and see what we get back so in here we go to um, app.jsx so the endpoint is create a link token we don't need any json data like this so yeah now if we go to our app and uh, we, we see that we return this response from played and it has the link token field which we will use in uh, in the library. Now we will connect the UI played library to our React app. So the library is called the uh, React played link. And uh, yeah, we'll, we can look inside this uh, their GitHub page. So yeah, we can add it with the React played link to the to the client. So in here if we go to the client npm i react played link with dashes and uh, then there's also a basic example in, uh, in here with uh, using hooks which uh, we can uh, just use this one and uh, adapt it so in here like this Yeah, we will uh, remove what we were doing before, and uh, in here we need to we need to put the link token from the response. So, so this field from here, so response data link token. So from here we we can um, save it in um, as a state field. So we will do uh, let's say link token set link token use state so now we will do set link token to response data and then link token like that and in here we will uh, fill in the the link token we just provided like that and and uh, on success we will just uh, print it to the console what we received back let's say success and then um, public token and uh, metadata like this and now if we reload oh yeah we, we didn't import the use played link um, hook so we just import it at the top if we reload again yeah we see that now we have the button and uh, if we click on it we get this UI from the library and we get the um, sandbox marker at the bottom of the page so yeah we can just select from um, we can select the bank and then we go through this uh, sandbox flow where we don't need to enter anything we just click next next and select the bank account and once everything is done 
so we see that um, it printed the public token and uh, a metadata with account ID and uh, everything. And if we go back to, to this flow right here, so what we did so far, we got the link token from the Plate API. This is the UI we just uh, put in the link token to. The user processed the authentication flow. And now we have the public token, which we need to send to the Plate API again on the server side and uh, get an access token. And then with the access token, we get the uh, account information. Now we will uh, save this uh, public token we just received. We'll save it in a state variable like we did with the link token. So we'll do public token, set public token. And in here on success, we will do set public token to the public token we just received. And uh, we will also um, uh, create another component in the same file. Let's call it um, played the authentication that takes as, an, as a prop the public token. And for now, it's only going to return it as a span. Let's, we just want to make sure uh, it works correctly. like that. So in here, if we have the um, if we have the public token set, then we return the new component we just uh, we just created. So in, if it's set, we return um, played auth with the public token equals public token. Otherwise, we we return the login uh, flow. So in here, we can uh, try it out again. Okay. So yeah, we see that we got the new component that just prints the public token. We shouldn't print this one to the end user. This is just uh, temporary. Now we can perform the next steps in the flow. So which, which are exchanging the public token for an access token. So if we scroll down, let's see, initialize script. Exchange public token, yeah, this is um, the one uh, we want. So in here, inside uh, this, uh, that we need to add that new endpoint to our server. So in here, we have request response next, just as usual. We'll remove the API part. So yeah, the um, public token will be as, in, in a JSON field uh, called public underscore token. Our client is called uh, played client. We pass the public token like that. Access token. And uh, actually right now we can, um, so they say they should be saved to a persistent database and uh, associated with the sign in user, we'll just uh, return the access token for now to make sure it works. Let's see. Access token. Like that, we, we don't need the item ID. So in here, we just return uh, response. Yeah, actually, they are overriding the response again. Let's call this one played response. So this one will be played response. And this one response that JSON. So status 500 send failed. Like that. 
and now we can make we can call this new endpoint from uh, react so inside in here we need to make another use uh, use effect to make the api call so we'll do use effect Uh, async function fetch data then we call fetch data so in here let's do access token equals um, await axios dot post and it will be the url is uh, exchange public token and let's see what how we should uh, structure the request so it should be public token inside the body so like that public token and uh, we'll just log uh, access token that data for now let's see access token okay so now if we 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 actually see that we received the access token it's printed to to the console and now we can use this access token in uh with the auth uh, api so if we search for played api reference we will find a list of all the en api endpoints and uh, the one we need is uh, this one from here auth um, slash get so in here uh, yeah this is uh, what uh, what we need to the endpoint we need to call and we need to provide the, the access token we just received so in here we will make a new endpoint in node for uh, this request let's go to the server index.js so we'll do in here let's just call it auth and then async function request response like that so we need to get the access token let's just call it access underscore token to request body equals access token this one will receive from uh, react and uh, now we we make a request and we call uh, played client with it like that we we don't need to provide the type i think that's for typescript like that let's call this one played request and uh, this one played response and then in the endpoint response we do response.json played response that data and we just need to handle the failure case response status uh, let's say 500 send failed so now we can try it to connect it with um, from uh, from react so we have an access data i think it, the field is called access token okay so now we need uh we do another response in here await axios that post the endpoint is auth and um it needs to be like this access token and the field will be access token data and then from here access token with the camel case 
access token like that. And uh, we'll just print it to the console for now. Let's do console log auth data. We'll do auth that data. And let's see what we received. So we can see it in here. We inside auth data, we have this structure with accounts. And um, there's this section called numbers. And inside ACH, it's an array. And the first one, it has the account number and uh, the routing number. And now uh, we are going to display them in, um, in here instead of this uh, public uh, sandbox key. So we will add a state field. Let's call this one um, account and set account like this. So now we will do a set account in here. And it will be auth uh, data. I think is it in um, numbers ACH of zero numbers ACH of zero. And now uh, we'll just uh, set that entire structure in there. like that. So now um, we need the field uh, account and then uh, routing. So in here we will do um, account and um, we will add them as uh, paragraphs. So it will be account number and then it will be account that think account. Let's see. Yeah, okay, that one is good. And then uh, the same one, but account dot uh, routing. And we need to wrap them into um, to a component, into a empty element, something like that. And uh, yeah, look at that. It's a, it, we completed the entire OAuth flow and we retrieved the um, account and routing numbers as uh, expected. That's it for today. If you have any questions or you run into issues, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.